77 kit by Digiflavor. Now, Digiflavor made a bit of a comeback over the last 12 months or so. We've had kind of a little bit from all sorts of different categories of the vape world. We've had the Torch RTA that was this, well, you might not call it cool, but I thought it was pretty cool looking rebuildable tank that had LED lights in it, if you're into that kind of thing. Along with that, we had things like uh, rebuildable mouth to lung tanks. We've had the drop version 1.5 RDA, and now they've decided to hit the single battery market and they've stuck on their new XP pod tank on top. So let's check it out. We'll look at the XP pod tank first, which is 24 and a half millimeters in diameter and fits on here quite nicely. At the top, you've got an 810 drip tip, removable and replaceable. You can fit your own. It takes the Gig Vape P series coils, which are pretty well known coils. Now they're pretty trusty, pretty decent coils. Of course, this has four and a half mils worth of e liquid. At the base, there you've got your airflow control that has a nice little stopper when it's on all the way closed. If I spin that around, it's now fully closed on both sides. Obviously, when you open it up, you get full airflow. Nice little stopper, nice resistance to it as well. Obviously, I've got the rainbow version of it, which obviously is not really my favorite, but it's not too bad. Generally, it's a very simple pod tank. To remove the pod, you just put it like that. It's magnetically fixed. Now, you might see a little bit of moisture in there, but this is about as bad as it gets when it comes to moisture. It does get a little bit moist, but it's more condensation. It's really not a leak from the coils. These Geek Vape Push Fit coils are pretty decent. Not really leakage, just a lot of buildup of condensation. I've deliberately left that for a good few days, just so you can see kind of the worse it gets. Obviously, clean that up if you, your coils, your base of your airflow gets like this. But yeah, just something to keep in mind. Keep it nice and dry as best you can. Obviously, you've got the push fit coils, and there's a tiny little bung there. Now, actually, the hole to fill isn't too small, but actually kind of getting hold of the bung itself kind of need, you need nails, at least some kind of nails, or very strong fingertips just to kind of get the rubber bung and pull it out. But once you've got it open, it's easy enough to fill. And I would say you just pop it back in and away you go. Fit, fill and finish, yeah, it's fairly decent quality having screws together. The actual magnetic connection is nice and strong. It's not gonna come out with a flick. Uh, and also, it's nice that it's a decent capacity uh, and it's not a bubble glass. Obviously, if you're in the TPD regions, there'll probably be some kind of silicon bung in there. Now, I don't know how easy it'll be to remove, but four and a half mil capacity is not bad for this kind of pod tank. The XP77 mod is a single 18650 device, and obviously, like it says, it can fire up to 77 watts, which I actually think is really good that they've limited 
an 18650 battery to 77 watts. I see a lot of devices nowadays that can fire up to 100 watts with a single 18 battery, and I think it's a bit over the top. These kind of batteries this size, not really capable, at least not capable of doing that for very, very long. So I actually quite like that it's limited to a lower wattage than we see from a lot of other devices. Now, speaking of color, look, this isn't my favorite color, but I do like that it's kind of that pearlescent. You've always got green in a certain angles, you've got purple. It reminds me of a couple of Nissan Primaries I've seen in the past that have had a cheap paint job, but it's it's a decent, it's nice to see a device with something different than just blacks and silvers and gun metals, something a bit different. There are obviously different colors available as well, the normal colors as well, but yeah, I think it's quite nice. You probably can't see it very well on camera, but it is quite cool how you get a green to purple fade, pretty decent. Another selling feature of this device, or at least something in the DigiFlavor we're talking about, is this Digi Crown, which is the fire button, but it's also for your adjustment. So all you do is you have to spin it, and it will adjust the wattages up to 77 watts. Of course, it round robins as well. Three clicks the fire button, you're into the menu options. Obviously, you can change the theme. There's a couple of different theme options on here. You can scroll through temperature control, bypass, variable curves, all that kind of stuff. Obviously, you can change the color of the LED light on the sides here as well. One thing I'm never a big fan about these spinny wheels is how easy it is to accidentally change your wattage or change your setting one smart feature they've come up with is this little locking switch at the base now at the minute i have it fully unlocked which means i can spin as much as i want and it will change to whatever it changes to now if i flick that just a little bit this way just in the middle setting i've now locked this wheel which means it won't if i can get my fingers on it it won't adjust anything but it will still fire now what have i got 15 watts that's why i can't hear but it will still fire Really, really nice. Now, of course, again, I can flick that all the way across and it completely locks the device. Nice that they've added that locking feature. I do feel the actual lock itself needs a little to be a little bit more clicky, a little bit more clunky between the three settings. I feel like I could accidentally flick that across to fully unlocked and not realize and I've changed my wattage up to 77 watts and end up getting a dry hit. But I think it's nice they've thought about that feature. Going on to the back is where the battery door is. Now, I have good things and bad things about this battery door. First of all, you have two little kind of ledges there, little recesses there that you can kind of get, you have to get your nails on to kind of open up. I wish they were a bit bigger. You can't really do this with finger and thumbs. You've got to try and dig your finger in there to get the battery door out. Now, the battery door, or well, when you get it on right, is held in absolutely solid, but there is up and down movement, which bothers me, especially when you're holding this, it's just there. And it's not like you're shaking your hands around, but it's just battery door movement. It's just a little bit annoying, but I am pleased how well it actually fits on magnetically onto the device. But sometimes trying to get it off, I, I lose my grip. Obviously, put the battery ribbon in there, which is really nice to remove your batteries. But yeah, a little bit of up and down wobble and trying to remove it can be a bit of a pain. Now, when it comes to actual feeling in the hand, it's a pretty solid feeling device. Even with that slight wobble from the battery door, it feels pretty solid, feels sturdy. And actually, even though the digital crown's not really my favorite way of navigating and operating a device, I actually like the chipset and I like kind of all the settings and all that kind of stuff. It's nice customization there as well. And it's just actually not a bad little device to kind of hold and carry around. One of the best things Digiflavor have done is make use of the P-Series coils by Geekvay. I have the 0.4 ohm coil in here, recommended between 50 and 60 watts. I've got it at 55 watts. I've got the airflow all open. Let's give it a little bash. Really nice flavor. Quite an airy draw with that airflow all the way open, but I do prefer this coil with the airflow all the way open. I like quite an airy vape with a slight restriction, especially with these kind of sub-ohm tanks. One thing I must say for a 0.4 ohm coil, 55 watts sounds about right it performs really well one of the best slightly higher sub ohm coils that i've used there's a couple of 0.3 ohm coils and maybe 0.5 ohm coils from different manufacturers never really perform as well as the lower resistance coils this 0.4 does a pretty good job let's try out the 0.2 The 0.2 ohm coil is recommended between 60 and 70 watts. I've got it at 65 watts, right smack back in the middle of that recommendation. Actually comes up on here with 0.18. Let's give it a little bash. A stunning coil, really decent flavor. A little bit better than the 0.4. The 0.4 is very good. This 0.2 ohm P series coil from Geek Vape is in my top three for best sub ohm coils. Now I haven't tried every sub ohm coil on the market, but I've tried quite a few. This is in my top three. The main reason being, apart from the flavor, which is great, 
Longevity. These geek vape coils last really, really well. Now, of course, that depends on what e-liquid you're vaping on and how often you vape and all that kind of rubbish. But I've had really good life out of this coil and the 0.4, but this 0.2 just performs really, really nice. Real decent flavor. Slightly cool in a mesh coil. 65 watts, you could go up a little bit more if you wanted to. It's handling an 80-20 e-liquid, no problems at all. A very decent performing coil. So my final thoughts of the XP77 kit by Digiflavor. Let's start with the rubbish as we always do. Start off with a tank. It's a pod tank that looks more like a sub ohm tank than most pod tanks do, which I quite like. When you look at it like that, you wouldn't really know it's a pod tank. And it performs fine. Four and a half mil capacity is not too massive, so it fits on the device. Obviously, the color is subjective, not my favorite, but hey, it looks all right. 810 drips, it replace your own. Airflow adjustment works absolutely fine. It does pretty much everything a regular sub ohm tank does nowadays. And coming with the Geek Vape P series coils is an absolute winner. So. Not many complaints about the actual tank and definitely performance wise performs really, really well. The device uh, pros and cons, the customizability in the LEDs may be a bit silly for some of you. And I completely understand that it's almost a pointless feature, but it doesn't really have any effect on the battery life and you can turn them off anyway. The digital crown might annoy some of you. And for me personally, I find it a bit annoying when I'm scrolling through the wattage. But once you set your wattage, flick that little locking switch to the middle and you're not going to adjust anything just by accidentally spinning the wheel. It all stays absolutely solid, doesn't change your wattage. Really nice feature. The locking switch, however, is a little bit on the loose side, so it is actually quite easy to accidentally turn that to fully locked or fully unlocked, in which case you're going to accidentally scroll through that digi crown and change your wattage. So that, that this lock switch needs to be a little bit stiffer. Now, the battery door, the up and down wobble does bother me, and, but not enough to really be a major issue. It should just fit a little bit better. It's nice and snug magnetically. It fits in there really, really nice. But it's a bit of a pain to get out because of those magnets and because there's not much grip. But it's really not bad. I'm pleased that they've limited the wattage to 77 watts. As random as 77 watts is, I'm pleased that the 18650 is limited to that amount. Chipset works pretty well. It's nice and powerful. I've had no problems with kind of uh, the power output from this. I'd say it's about what you'd expect for a mainstream device. It's not overpowered and underpowered. Uh, the battery life obviously is one thing that when you're using the 0.2 ohm coil, 60 to 70 watts, you are going to drain through a single 18650. And like the Vapor said recently, I like a bit of headroom in the in the wattage output to the coils you're using you're not really going to get that with the point two but overall i think this isn't a bad kit i think it performs really well the p series coils are really really good the device as much as like cool as i think the paint finish is there's just minor things about it that kind of just bother me and a little bit and that's enough for me to kind of i'll give this whole kit a kind of seven out of ten it's like a decent but could do better kind of device so i hope that's helpful folks if it was hit the like button or subscribe if you fancy of course you see my latest review up there a random one there and massive thanks to geek vape for sending this over for review i'm flag of vapor thanks for watching